welcome to another episode of Lewis Art. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to say. Hi, welcome to another Lewis Art video. That's what I normally say. Yes. Hi, welcome to another Lewis Art video. And um, once again, I'm out with Mike today, uh, my friend from the previous video. If you haven't seen that one, it's over here somewhere. Um, and we're going to be um, painting another scene looking down uh, towards the River Torridge. And um, you wait till you see Mike's new setup. He's improved his easel somewhat and it is very cool. So here, here I am with Mike again and uh, let's take a look at this new and improved setup. Right, well this is my new palette board. Um, homemade? Homemade. It's compact but it uh, the good thing is that um, it just clips easily onto the um, easel and uh, or tripod and sits exactly where I want it to. And uh, this is amazing. <laughs> by opening it up, I've got a place for uh, um, my thinners and so on here. Yeah. Uh, medium and and uh, on this side I can put brushes or my coffee cup. Did you measure it specifically? I was, I was going to put a glass piece of glass yeah. in there, but I decided it would be too heavy. Yeah. So I got this and uh, it was slightly too large, so while I was cutting this up, I put this through the band saw as well and sawed off a couple of little bits. Yeah. So it fits in so there. So it fits. So um, I'll let you get set up, I'll get my easel set up and then we'll talk about our plans for today, composition wise I okay. guess. Okay. Yeah, good stuff, see you in a minute. That's fine. So as always in the back, I have a bin bag through the middle. I've got my uh, paint um, cleaner, my paint thinner, spare rubber gloves, um, my brushes, a uh, pot on the side for uh, putting in brushes and uh, palette knives and things. So I'm gonna work with a limited palette again today. I've got uh, titanium white, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, um, yellow ochre, and permanent alizarin crimson. So I've got two canvases today. The first one, uh, the 8x10 canvas panel by Arteza, 100% cotton, 8 ounce primed, bloody blah 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 blah. But I also have now um, the Crawford and Black basic cheap canvas board, 100% um, pure cotton, double gesso primed. Good. So um, double vaccinated. That's useful. Uh, suitable for oil and acrylic paints. Yeah, 10 by 12 inch approximately, approximately. So um, I'm thinking what I might do today is sketch out quickly on a smaller board and then switch over um, to the larger board and give that a try. I mean, it's not massively different, is it? But you know, might be worth a try. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what Mike's up to. First of all, he's, he's getting out his colors. What are you using today, Mike? What's your plan? Right, well, colors today, they're mostly Windsor and Newton colours, although I've got some Georgian as well, uh, and I'm I've got black because I intend to give the uh, border greyish wash. Yep. As a background, um, I've got yellow ochre, the lizarin crimson, uh, burnt umber, and cadmium yellow, and titanium white. This is a cadmium yellow pale hue. So yeah, because you were just saying about the the, the hue colours. You, you saw a, a tip online. Yes, that um, anything with hue on the end is not uh, as solid a colour as something without the hue. And uh, we've just discussed this and decided that it's probably a lot cheaper to make the hue than it is... Uh, yeah, mine's cadmium yellow hue as well, so I think, yeah, I guess it, I guess it is, but um, I figure at, at this stage, yes, in our development, I shouldn't think it matters all too much what, no. what colours, what type of oils we're using, no. um, because I'm the same, I've got some Georgian oils mixed in there as well, um, that I use, and, uh, you know, I guess crossing, crossing different brands and different types of oils isn't the end of the world. 
It doesn't seem to impact any of the canvases that I've done so far. You know, not seeing any obvious signs of like, you know, cracking or, or, or separation or anything. So No, none of mine lasts that long. No, so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I just mean I've got a, I've got a whole room full of them now. <laughs> so you get a lot of dogs, uh, a lot of people walking down with their dogs down here. This dog just a minute ago just came and had a little sniff in my bag to see if I had any food. No food in there. Just oils, I'm afraid. Just oils. Yeah, there you are. Is he going to be a film star? Yeah. <laughs> Go on, let's play again. Ready? Here we go. What's your dog called? He's called Oreo, but we, Oreo? we call him Ori. He was a rescue Based dog. off the biscuit. Rescue dog, yeah. We did date on the way, so I don't really like that. But we, we didn't want to change it, really. No. So we shortened it to Ori, which sounds... Marginal. <laughs> yeah, lovely. So, initially for my composition, I was thinking I'd go down the line here um, with the water down in there. But this, to be honest, this overhanging branch was bothering me. I kind of didn't want that in my picture. So I thought, well, actually, if I come out a little bit wider, it, it does a couple of things. One, it opens it up. I still have this line, so I've got this perspective line coming out here. There's a little bit more water centrally. And then also up in the background there, there's a little bit of uh, Wesley, the village. So I could, if I, if I felt like it, just mark that in slightly. Um, again, also, if I tip it, I've got the trees on this side, which is nice. But then I, c I can also get up quite a bit of a section of sky in there. So I'm thinking something along here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap a photo and then I'm going to speed sketch this one out onto this board, onto the smaller board and see how I feel about it. Okay, so here's my sketch in so far, um, going in with the darker bits in here, um, so that it sort of slides down here. This is my walk in here with the yellower grass down the side, um, the water over there in the mid ground. Probably just going to allow the church to sort of poke up through the top there, actually thinking about it, um, and then sort of start to build in a little bit more. So that's the, that's the, um, the burnt sienna, I think yeah, it was prepared that in advance. I you? did, I did, this is one of the first ones I did, the board, I did about um, five or six of them like it and then I, I sort of stopped using it quite quickly because I I didn't know if I really got on with it or whether I preferred the white underneath but so I've, I've only got a few boards left so obviously I've just pulled this one out to try it as well. It certainly um, warms the scene up. It, it does, yeah it does indeed and um, yeah I'm just trying to, I've basically been putting things in and wiping them off to kind of give that sort of effects but the thing I've just thought is to be honest that's an awful lot of green just flopped in there I probably would have been better shifting it all down 
it's quite nice i think i'll do the same one again with the larger canvas in a minute but i'll i'll do what i just said there and i'll drop drop it all yeah i'll drop this but yeah i don't know i might even just stop there and switch to the other board actually and leave that one as it is and then come back to it maybe at another time if i feel like it yeah. but it is time for coffee So it is a long way off in the distance, but over there on the side of a barn um, is a fox which was spray painted by Mau Mau. Um, he's a local chap from Appledore. Um, he's been spray painting for a long time and um, it was actually him that inspired me to get spray painting when I did one of his workshops over at uh, the Broomhill Art um, uh, Hotel. and. Um, got me thinking about how I could use spray paint on canvas um, yeah great stuff so if you're interested in uh, spray paint that sort of thing have a look at Mau Mau right so Mike you've gone from from sort of the black to some lovely color in there <laughs> <laughs> you're too kind <laughs> how do you feel how soon. do you feel Mike? too soon uh, yeah I'm not uh, feeling too good um, I tried to, I started by just using a piece of rag yeah. and trying to build up the shapes but um, all of a sudden I'm started to try and put detail in <laughs> and it's much too early. Yeah, but that's uh, the beauty of oils, you can wipe it off and go can, again can't you? You can wipe it off and... Uh, You're not happy? Yeah. I, I'm recording now though. Just a couple of couple of lunch shots. So that was a pleasant lunch. We could have probably just ended up sitting there all afternoon chatting away about different bits and pieces, but we've got paintings to do, so um, time to crack on. I'm gonna jump in now with the sky and the water. Um, and then we'll and then sort of start working my way out from there so let's go for it So that's the yellows in, so continuing on, now I want to start putting in those darker greens and bring those out a little bit more. That's the plan anyway, Let's see how that goes. So Mike, <laughs> how are you feeling about it now? I'm loving it, it looks awesome. I'm feeling happier. Good. It's a long way from being complete, but um, I'm happier that um, it's much looser than I started progressing in a, a much tighter fashion and realised the mistakes it's getting there. Yeah, I, I, honestly, from a distance, because um, Mike's previous artwork that I remember was from the university days and you were doing abstract uh how would you describe them mike go on in your own words uh well they were they're abstract paintings but i tried to get some um, atmosphere with them yeah so um i didn't describe them as landscapes but they were they were produced to provide some sort of recognition. Yeah. And they, um, the dripping element to it that you put into them, I thought that's what was going on here, but this is just your brush strokes, and I absolutely love that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely love it. Okay, 
so this is slightly different I know but I'm back in the studio um, the main reason being that my camera battery uh, ran out so um, so I've been thinking about adding this section anyway where we take a look at the paintings back at the studio sort of analyze a little bit about what's going on and make some sort of pointers as to where I can improve in the future. Do you like my pointy stick? Personally, I don't see the point of this. <laughs> okay, so this is the the painting that I finished with. It was rushed in the end. This whole area here isn't defined enough. Um, and there's a definite different shade in here that wasn't actually there. It was a lot greener than that, but I think you know, I was trying to give the impression of the walk-in, um, which I've sort of tried to tried to keep. Quite like the fan brush that I use on those bits um, here and around here. Um, that's pretty cool, um, and I think I'll, I'll, I'll keep exploring with that. The sort of purplish hills in the background needed a, a a little bit more defining and I think I could have done that if I'd enhanced the sky. The church in there is not particularly defined and I really don't like this line across here. Um, yeah, it just makes it look like a giant T or something. That shouldn't be there at all. So I really needed to sort of work that out as well. This tree here, I like this bit under the hedge is, it was on its way. So all in all, it's, it's okay. Um, Again, in terms of the overall composition, I'm quite pleased. The process, things are starting to improve, things are starting to fall into place, which means I'm not fiddling around quite so much with working out what's what. Bit by bit, I'm, I'm happier with my pictures, but uh, I still think there's obviously an awful lot to improve on. Please comment. Please give me any hints and tips and advice or ideas that you may have that'll make a real difference to me. And um, Apologies that the video, the camera battery ran out uh, whilst out playing air painting. Thank you again to Mike um, for coming out and uh, keeping me company. I uh, really was impressed with his painting, his finished piece. Um, you can see two paintings in, he's already starting to create his own uh, style and technique, which I think is really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this or any of my other videos there are a number of ways you can support me in the future. Like, share and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And now you can even donate on my Buy Me A Coffee page. As you can see from my new videos, I love coffee. But your donation will do more than just keep me full of caffeine. Every donation will go straight into buying new art materials for future projects so your help will be truly appreciated. It's easy to use. Simply follow the link and you can donate as little as two pounds to help out. Feel free to leave a comment and there's even a link to my website. Your support really does go a long way to helping me to create more art in the future. Thanks.